It's 12 o'clock and it's that time when we all take a moment away from the hustle and bustle of the day to get refreshed meditating on the Word of God in season. Welcome to lunch. Jennifer Leclerc is an author and speaker who operates in the office of the prophets. Previously the editor of Charisma magazine, she's now the leader of Awakening. Ladies and gentlemen, Jennifer Leclerc. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me on the broadcast. Thank you so much for chatting with us. How are you doing? Good, good. I'm always glad to be in London. It's one of my favorite places to be. Oh, welcome back to London. So talking about hearing and obeying, what do you think God is saying to the church? Today. You know, in, in London, the, the church is, the Lord is saying to, to rise up and be the voice. Amen. Um, you know, many in the church have, have grown quiet. Uh, the, the prophets and prophetic people have been very still and afraid to, to lift up their head because of uh, maybe people not agreeing with them or the persecution. Uh, but if enough of pe prophetic people and prophets rise up, uh, the opposition will have to bow. So now is the time in England for the church to rise up and be the voice. Prophets, prophetic people, and every believer have something to share. So how easy is it going to be to get everyone to rise up? It's difficult, but that's what the fivefold ministry is for. See, Ephesians 4 and 11 says that, that, that Jesus gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. And so the prophets in, in Great Britain need to rise up and teach people how to judge a word, how to hear from the Lord, mm. and, and give them the confidence that they're hearing from God so that they will be willing to speak forth what He says. And, and it is, it's a process. It takes time. But we've got to start somewhere. So is that going to be like an individual effort or more on the corporate side? Uh, it, more on the corporate side. You know, my Ignite Network, we train people. Um, people from, from the UK, from France, all over the world are in there. And so, uh, because I can't go everywhere. And, and a lot of churches don't teach this. And so we train through the internet and things like that. But, you know, it, it's through that, like a school or a church. Uh, but you can have a one-on-one -on -one mentor. They're just harder to find. Okay, so how are the prophets doing in America today? <laughs> oh gosh, there's a there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of strong prophetic voices that are rising with Amen. very accurate predictions. Amen. And then you have others who uh, who are are just learning. We have a new generation of, of millennials. I don't mm -hmm. know what you call them here, but but the younger ones that yeah, are millennials. rising up fast and, and 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 learning and growing and being mentored. And so we're in Amen. a good, we're in a good spot in America. Uh, the prophets are not shy to speak. We just have to do a better job of, 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 of finding that unified voice. Unified voice. Yeah. So how do we get that unified voice? I think it comes through a uh, relationship. Like I'm on the Apostolic Council of Prophetic Elders okay. in America with Cindy Jacobs and mm -hmm. Bill Hammond. Mm -hmm. and, and we come together collectively and share what the Lord is saying. And once a year we put out one prophetic word. Nobody's name is on it. Doesn't matter who released it, but we come into agreement and we release that one voice. And so Amen. that is one part is starting the council, starting the you know Dr. Sharon Stone's on that council, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and Betty King comes over, and so uh, coming together and really build, building relationship and seeking the Lord together. And we need more of those councils, even in cities. Amen. Yeah. Hey guys, prophesy. Why the builders built? Is there a way we can get the apostolic and the prophetic to work together? We need the apostolic and prophetic to work together. You know, you saw in the church at Antioch, there was uh, prophets and teachers, and you saw, you know, Paul and Barnabas and Paul and Silas and these others, you know, the, the fivefold ministers need to work together. I think, you know, the, the, the prophets in the 80s, 1980s, used to prophesy the apostles are coming, the apostles are coming. Then the apostles began to rise up in the 90s, and the, the prophets didn't like it so much because of the accountability. Mm. Apostles are more visionary, strategy, they're seeing the world. Prophets are hearing, you know, specific things for specific times and seasons. When they come together, it's very powerful, but they have to, I think we have to learn to respect one another's giftings and not worry about who is in charge or who is leading, but come together mm -hmm. and let each, the Bible said, letting every joint supply. Mm -hmm. So I think with the apostles and the prophets, there has to be a mutual respect, uh, nobody necessarily lording over anybody else, nobody's better, but an understanding of what is unlocked when the two come together, and that's the real issue. So how can we get that synergy? Because I think that's something that we really need today. Because 
it's as if we are all disjointed in a way if the church is disjointed it is disjointed and i think that comes with people not understanding each other's giftings mm -hmm. you know if you expect a pastor uh, to act like a prophet then you're going to be disappointed with your pastor if you expect a prophet to act like a, a pastor this in the same way you're going to be very disappointed in the prophet Pro each individual gift has distinctions the apostles are builders the prophets are the voice the teacher inspires in you a hunger for the word the evangelists they go and get people saved and the pastor they care for the sheep and so i don't i don't think we've done a good job in the in the body of christ as still uh, distinguishing between each of these gifts and understanding the benefits you know the bible says if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet you receive the prophet's award reward but we try to receive a prophet in the name of a pastor or we try to to get the teacher to act like an apostle and so i think there needs to be a lot more teaching on these specific gifts these anointings and these graces so that we can really recognize each grace appreciate it and receive from it every believer can be fully equipped you can have the grace of the apostle prophet evangelist pastor teacher mm -hmm. and the believer will be much more effective when they have sat under all these anointings but we have to stop being threatened by each other and really understand that these all these fivefold gifts work together to raise up a strong body amen amen obviously if the prophetic and apostolic don't change the blueprint no one can and then we're all working in silos yes so how can we get a more cohesive outlook I think that we need to intentionally, in our own cities, reach out and build relationship. You know, chances are, because the church is mostly pastoral driven, you know, you're not going to find as many apostles and prophets. It can be hard to find them. I don't even know who all the apostles and prophets are in my region, in my city. Uh, we're trying to find them so that we can come together, even if it's just once or uh, three or four times a year, and share and be connected and, and begin to strategize together. So I think it's a matter of being extremely intentional, asking around, even searching on the internet, who are the apostles, who are the prophets, apostolic churches, and it, it requires a work and a labor of love on our part, but if we can get in the same room together and share together, I think we'll find that we have more in common than we have uh, uh, differences. And it's coming together on the commonalities. You know, we're never gonna all agree on everything. We're all gonna have our little things we believe or don't like, but if we can come together and believe for the greater cause, that the body be equipped for the work of the ministry, to edify the whole body of Christ, to see Jesus' return through the preaching of the gospel, if we can come together the things we can agree on, I feel like that would be the, the ultimate success uh, for the apostolic prophetic coming together is to lead that charge, is that that's that forerunner spirit, that forerunner ministry. And I think if we can, but it requires communication. Right now we don't have enough of that. Okay, communication. So I guess that's going to be beyond the four times in a year meeting. Yeah, it needs to be personal relationships. I have, I'm in personal relationships with a lot of apostles and prophets who sure. I'm in personal relationship with. And I think that that has required a lot of intentionality on my part because it takes time. And that's what no one seems to have enough of. But that's what it's going to take. Communication takes time. Amen. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us today. It's been a real pleasure and privilege and blessing <laughs> listening to you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for your fellowship today. Have you been blessed by this broadcast? Feel free to share the blessing. It's easy. Like, comment, and share. Don't forget to turn on your live notifications, though, if you're watching on Facebook. If you're on YouTube, just hit the subscribe button, and we shall see you tomorrow. Stay blessed. See you in the world.